Conte, and we are live at IBM Edge. This is theCUBE, SiliconAngle.tv's continuous coverage of IBM Edge. This is where we bring you the smartest people we can find. We extract the signal from the noise, we package it up, and share it with you, our audience. So thanks for all your tweets, your questions. I'm at D Vellante, I'm here with my co-host uh, for this segment, John MacArthur, and we are here with Bob Concia, and, and Bob is the Vice President of uh, Storage Systems at IBM. Welcome. Great, thank you, David. Good to see you. Good, good to be here. So Bob Thanks, runs the DS8000 and the XIV. Uh, DS8000 is the you know, very high-end storage, IBM's you know, s very high-end systems offering, a system storage offering, and XIV. The, That's right. The new kid on the block. That's right, relatively. And relatively. Uh, yeah, I guess so, right? Four it's, years. It's, it's, yeah, been it's been a while been, now. It's been a while so now, yeah. XIV was a very cool acquisition you guys made back in 2007. That's I believe right. you picked it up. I think you announced the number. I think it was 340 million. Uh, uh, but maybe you didn't announce it was, that number. It was, no, we didn't announce the number, but it was, it was less than that. Quite it was, a bit okay. Less than that. So, so, so anyway, but it, was, it wasn't 2.4 billion. No, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah that's the point. It wasn't. <laughs> but, it, but, it, but it spawned other activity that was in that, in that ballpark, though, by yeah. others. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, sure. right. For so sure. congratulations on creating a frothy environment. I know a lot of guys are very happy and, you know. Especially at Three Park, Capella, with, High Salon. Would yeah. like me to, right, Phil Soren and Dave Scott, thank exactly. you very exactly. much. Exactly, <laughs> uh, For getting it all started. Well, anyway, welcome to theCUBE. This is Edge. This is your, your big event and uh, it's been a long time coming, actually. I think that uh, this is, we've been calling this your, the storage coming out party. How do you feel? I think so. I think, you know, we've had um, events like this in the past um, that we have done, um, certainly, on the heels of the acquisitions that we've done. We did in, in that space between 2006 and 2009, maybe 2010, we did on the order of 13, 14 acquisitions in and around the storage space, uh, whether it be services, software, or hardware. Um, so there was a major, major focus on the corporation on, uh, on investing in a big, big way uh, in, the storage, uh, in the storage infrastructure and everything around storage. Um, understanding that you know it was going to be a very key part of concerns for clients, their infrastructure, and and everything that they had going for them at that point in time. At what point did you guys decide to make that in investment in storage? I would say it came in the late 2005-2006 time frame. In fact, we came off a year in 2006 um, where we had just picked up some market share um, benefit primarily from um, our partnerships that we had. We always did very well in, in, the, in the mainframe, mainframe attached storage, both in tape and desk, but our tape business was doing well, and we had started picking up some share in the mid-range space based off a partnership that we had with LSI Logic, which is now part of NetApp, and of course we started the NetApp relationship at that point in time. And uh, we realized in 2006 that our dependency on those relationships had grown quite large in the disk side. And there was a, a very clear motivation for us to go off and uh, invest more organically and bring some of the technology we had coming out of the research and development labs from around the world, um, but at the same time, not being afraid to go out and acquire, which was not in IBM's hardware group DNA, if you will, uh, back in that time frame. We had, the last time we had done an acquisition, in the storage space, it was Milex, great adapter cards out in Silicon right. Valley. Sold that off. And then we spun that off to LSI, and actually that's how we got introduced somewhat to, to LSI Logic. And so our dependency upon those OEM relationships, those OEMN, OEM that, that joint go-to-market model from a sales model standpoint, the manufacturing development model, had grown quite large. And so we wanted to not be as dependent upon that those relationships. They still have worked quite well for us, um, and they still work well for us to this day. Uh, but uh, but we wanted to get more more of the organic content. We had the we had the inventiveness, if you will. We had more patents than our other top five competitors combined. We still do. It's still the case here in 2012. But we weren't always the best at bringing solutions that mattered to our clients, especially around the distributed space within within the disk storage area. So this was key for us to go out and combine a lot of acquisitions that we had done in that time frame with our core uh, research and development facilities, and thus you see the portfolio we have today. It's quite, uh, quite comprehensive. I call it, uh, you know, the breadth is there, left to right, top to bottom, and, uh, and you know, we, we've never seen a, a better portfolio coming from IBM Storage at least if I've been associated with IBM storage, and that's effectively, you know, we were talking earlier about 27 years in the IBM, in the IBM business. Right. 
Well, Bob, your acquisition strategy is a little different from some of, some of your competitors, I think, in, in that you are acquiring companies much earlier at perhaps better uh, valuations than some of you, some of your competitors. So we'll have to, uh, the, that's they, true. I mean, that that's been uh, that's been our bread and butter for several years, uh, and the, and the way the corporation looks at it, they'd rather buy, you know, twenty companies at five hundred million apiece. Versus one company at five billion. Yeah, have you so, paid? I don't think you've paid five hundred million for any company yet, uh, in the storage space, though, have you? Not in the storage right. space, but I'm talking about you yeah. know within the software group, you know within our services organization, within the hardware side. But right. no, no, we've not been in that right. in that league yet. So we we yeah. do go out and find you know we've got a strong go to market model. Yeah, um, we've got uh, outstanding uh, capabilities of what it takes to really have a successful product in the market around that space of it. So if it's an area we're not innovating in, we'll go out and grab that IP and then integrate it into the IBM. Some, some companies are really good at onboarding um, acquisitions, new technology and integrating them into the process, and, or not only from a product perspective, but also from a go-to-market standpoint. So where do you, where do you well, you know, think we, we IBM we, 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 I think we do quite well. Our due diligence process um, in evaluating companies is the best I've seen. No, no doubt about it. We had a process that goes back several years that's run out of corporate. Um, it, obviously, they got a lot of experience within the software and services side of the house. Um, and so there is a set of rigorous criteria that you look for to make sure it financially can be ramped once IBM picks the company up and integrate it into the rest of big bad IBM, if you will. So um, if it doesn't have that capability, then we won't go after it, um, no matter what the value is or what the, what the, what the uh, innovation is at that point in time. So we're, we, we are very much targeted at making sure that we can integrate it into our product sets, into our solutions, and it's something that our sales teams would know to go out and, and be able to sell. So all of that goes into the criteria of, uh, of an acquisition. So I wonder if we could talk about that in the context of XIV, because that was a very major acquisition, at least in my mind. It was both strategic and, and tactical. I mean, you've done very well with it. You had a, you, you were talking earlier, Bob, about your reliance on other you right. know, suppliers, and IBM's never been comfortable being too reliant on other people's, you know, for core technology. Um, and then you make the, the XIV move, it's, um, Super simple storage virtualization, big trend. Um, you know, storage for the for the for the rest of us, if you will. That's right. You know, That's right. You don't need to be a PhD in Lund management to run an That's XIV. That's right. That's exactly right. Um, and you brought that in for a very attractive price. You know, whatever, H hundreds of millions of dollars uh, yep. versus you see multi-billion-dollar acquisitions going on, and very similar technologies. I'm not going to say the same, but I mean essentially that same sort of genre. Of, of capability. So take us back uh, through sort of what you guys have done with XIV. Particularly, I'm interested in um, the penetration in non all blue accounts. Right, and, and, that, and that's been a key part for us. I mean, our market share gain, our competitive win back has been better with that product, not just the technology, but the go to market strategy as well, than any other product I've got in the portfolio, bar none. Um, so we, we have. Uh, uh, been, been out in market uh, really since, I would say, with, with the IBM Blue Wash product, what we call the Generation 2 product, since September of 2008. And, uh, and about 70%, roughly 70, 75% of our sales are competitive displacement. So that's where somebody has not purchased an IBM storage array in the open space in the last three or four years. Yeah. So you, you're actually migrating off EMC or Hitachi or or compellent or whatever, HP, EVA, 3PAR, um, 70 to 75% of the time. And so that goes without saying that you, that means you're not typically coming from an IBM environment. And that's a whole different- Not coming from an IBM server uh, environment or storage environment? Could, an IBM storage, storage and server environment yeah. because we do a great job of selling our storage with our servers, right? Um, and that's where you see IBM storage present. I mean, our mainframe yeah. attach is very strong. Our power attach is strong. In the I series, you know, the external storage attach is, is strong with IBM. Um, and even at the low, low end, the, 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 the low end of the power line, it's also yeah. quite strong. Where we were not strong is in attaching to the rest of the world servers yeah. and the rest of, of I do would you, say, applications. Do you see the server and storage refresh cycles aligning, or they tend to run at sort of separate cycles? They tend to run in separate cycles. Okay. So we, so we, it's hard. The bundling is a little it's, hard. It, to it, do. it is a little, a little bit hard. Now we try to do 
a, uh, a pretty tight job with the mainframe side. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there is an affinity there that's right. like no other affinity right. with that with that Z series ecosystem. Right. Um, but but that one will tend to run uh, you know very close to one another. But you know whether you're out in the Wintel market or System X colleagues, which is which is more VMware these days yeah. than than uh, than a specific uh, than a specific X series uh, technology, if you will. Um, and, uh, and, but in our power, we, we incorporate power technology within our products. That's like the DS8000. And we'll typically introduce that power technology. So for example, Power7 um, will come into the DS8 line later in the year. Okay. So that followed about two years from where the power guys introduced that chip technology. So talk about where, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm intrigued by XIV because it was a, not a well-known technology. No, not at all. You guys purchased it, which is why you got, you know, I think such a good price on it. That's right. Um, but I certainly, the founder was well known. You know, it's yeah. well, from the well known founder, you know, yes. Israeli based technology. I want to ask you if you think Extreme IO is a low price, but we won't have to, <laughs> yeah. we won't have to answer that. Um, so, where does it fit in the portfolio? You know, I've, ha I've had debates sure. with the XIV team about, you know, it's tier one, and, well, you know, it's in, I don't want to get into the, de the definitional, but from a, from a portfolio standpoint, where does it fit? I mean, it's close to DS8000 in a low end, and it covers a wide swath, doesn't it? It, it, it does, it, it sure does. And now we've got an organic product that's doing quite well in the in the low end of the mid range and the low the end. He's coming up with the V7000 yeah. um, that's that's growing quite popular and, it, and that's really replacing you know our mid range DS4000 5000 product line in that in that area. Now some of the high end uh, systems or, or larger systems that we had with the DS4800 the DS5300 were were being uh, were being mined by XIB when XIB was ramping in the market, but the bulk of that mid-range opportunity is really being satisfied by the V7000. So XIB has only one choice, right? Really, is to go up upscale and to get into that tier one environment. When we bought the company, you know, we even labeled it internally within the IBM side, much to Moshe's, you know, uh, chagrin, that we called it tier 1.5, right? We didn't we didn't have it uh, at least back oh, yeah. in 2006 and seven as that tier one. We've certainly grown the product in 2008 into a tier one product, and that's where we're seeing a lot of our success um, grow in the marketplace around the exchange environment, around VMware, in that true distributed Wintel space um, is where, tier one space, is where we see XIV growing. Um, we integrated the sales force into our IBM storage sales force. We actually copied the model that XIV had, and we created a dedicated storage Salesforce Tiger at the beginning teams, of 20, yeah. and, and, and the Tiger Teams in 2011, and um, and a lot of that team that was out selling the XIB and only being paid on XIB in 2009 and in 2010 were now paid on the whole portfolio, and we were going at more the client and the account and the competitive takeout regardless of the product. So it caused a little bit of um, a little bit of challenge for us for the XIB. The momentum was was. Uh, was uh, not as strong as what we had had in, in, in prior years. We were still growing, but we weren't growing as strong as we had, hit, we had done in 2009 and 2010. And, uh, and, and then we came out with Gen 3 in September of, of, of last year, and the momentum's been very strong, back on very strong growth growth. So we're growing on the average 30% a quarter. How, how are the channel up. partners uh, dealing with the uh, broad portfolio and the portfolio transitions? I, you know, I think certainly they, uh, that's been a challenge. There's no doubt about it. There's you know, strong relationships in selling that DS4000, 5000 product line, selling the N-Series with that NetApp. They know how to sell that. They know how to sell that very well, and they've been doing it for several years, and they get a lot of support from what used to be LSI and what is now NetApp right. as well. Um, you know, going to an organic model requires you not just to make investments in development and manufacturing, but also in the whole go-to-market strategy as well. And that, that's been a major area for us from a marketing standpoint, from a sales support, both pre and post sales technical support. Um, and, you know, it, it's been a transition, no doubt, for, for our channel partners and for our sellers to be able to ramp that product. I think, you know, we're sort of at the end of that transition now, yeah. I hope. Um, and, and we see the market has greatly accepted in our channel partners have greatly accepted both the XIV as that tier one open distributed product, and then the tier two being the, the, the Starwise V7000. Um, did, did you say the, the XIV was growing at 30% per quarter? 30% per quarter. So this, since, is, this is since, year over year? Yeah, year over year. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, year over year. So significantly faster than the marketplace. So the market, let's say mm -hmm. the market's growing at what? 
mid to high single well, digits. Well, if you look, if, if you look in that tier one space, or what IDC calls the band nine and band ten space, the the high end disc, if you will, so it's 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 flat it's, to down. It, it's well, I want to say down, but it, it's flat, you know, to to very low single digits. So no, we we are doing well. And product. it kind of depends. It's very cyclical, right? I mean, you had you know EMC had a sort of a down quarter or last quarter. But well, everybody very, knew that their announce was coming out. And right. it had a very you know, a good quarter of the year before, so you That's had right. a tough compare. That's right. Um, but it's flattish, let's say. Right, right? Okay. exactly. XIV is up and to the right, although, uh, so that's gaining significant share because there's a lot of bumps in the road right now in storage. There is a lot right? of bumps in the road. And, and, and like I said, last year, the beginning of the year, you know, we came off growing a business that was $2 million at the end of 07 to, you know, $200 million to $500 million. And you know it's a, it's a pretty healthy business, you know, from what IBM sees and whatever. What it, it doesn't report the individual uh, revenue streams by itself, but you know we're in that. Ballpark. No, but it's tracking to a billion dollar entity. Absolutely, yeah, and that, that was is, our goal. Which is what you know, what obviously three par wants to do, or HP absolutely three par, what Compellent want to do. So it's quite amazing actually that these. Let's let's use the term. Sorry, Moshe, for the pejorative, but the the whole 1.5 space yeah. has created. I mean, essentially, at least three billion dollar companies, you might even be able to throw, you know, left-handed Equalogic in there. I mean, that's a massive innovation. It is, um, and, and, and it is, I think it's defining the new tier one, to be honest. This you is what I wanted to yeah, ask you. I, I is think, there I, a new definition for tier I, one? And Let's I, talk and I about think, that. I think there is, and I think the, you know, you it, it can no longer, that level of function, scalability, availability, robustness, integration, can no longer come at the price uh, and the cost to our clients that it used to be in the past. There's no doubt about it. I mean, if, if the world was going to continue to operate in that, that level, they just wouldn't store. They wouldn't store as much information. They, it would no longer uh, exist to be a, a, a really bonafide tier, um, in, in, in my opinion. So something had to change. And, the, and I think that XIV and comparable um, technologies and architectures have changed the game to get more efficient, to, to jam more data within to a storage array, to make more use of it, to be more virtualized and more utilized um, information, to effectively, dramatically lower the total cost of ownership. Not just the acquisition price, right? That, that's the easy management part. Management cost. But yeah. the, the whole management cost. We, we've done a lot of comparisons with our clients, with, with um, independent groups, where you know we are like 30 to 35% of the total cost of ownership of a comparable VMAX solution. And that, that reward for a customer wanting to take a risk or dip in their toe in the water with a new technology, a relatively, um, relatively new technology, I don't want to call XIV a new technology anymore, it's, it's ramped and it's pretty mm -hmm. mature, but back then, um, you know, getting, a, getting a client to tip their toe in the water, it had, there had to be a, a pretty good reward for that risk and for them to migrate off of uh, an existing vendor. But if you put your DS8000 hat on, you know, what, what is your, the analog to your VMAX hat, you would say, okay, but the reliability, the availability, the serviceability, the tier one attributes, you know, are, aren't there. But back to the earlier comment, there's a new definition for tier one. And, and what are the attributes and, 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 of that and I, and I would say, the way I look at it with the DS8000, and it's a, it, it's a very strong product in IBM's uh, servers and operating systems, if you will. So you look at where our strength is. It's in the mainframe, in the Zeto's right. OS space. Sure. It's in high-end power. It's in iSeries. I mean, all those are pretty contained ecosystems. That's a true right? blue product. That's right? a true blue product. And it's, gonna, it's done well there, and it will always do well there. When we went out and looked where the growth in the market was back in 2005 and 2006, mm -hmm. it wasn't as much there. It was out into the Wintel space. It was into yeah. VMware, which was just starting, virtualized servers. That's where the growth for distributed storage is, 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 is at. It's not, it's not in, in, in these other places. So, you know, the product could have worked there, but it didn't have the reward that was worth the risk of, of switching that XIV offers. And so that architecture really opened us up into that tier one enterprise open space. So when I talk about VMware, Exchange, SQL, SaaS, you know, Linux-based um, operating systems, Wintel-based operating systems, uh, you know, I talk about XIV being that tier one VMAX equivalent, and then V7000 being our VNX, if you will, equivalent in that space. When you talk about mainframe, you talk about IBM contained ecosystems, then the DS8000 sort of rules that rules that roast. Yeah, I, I, I actually am impressed that you actually manage both products, you know, because that says to me that you're willing to, you know, 
take the new and the old and well, and that you know, and that was a, that was a key back, back to your guys' questions about the acquisitions. That was a very very key uh, part of it. We did not want to have any confusion out there or erosion of our DSL 8000 space, yeah. and and thus you know we clearly targeted the team toward where the growth markets were. And it wasn't it wasn't where we yeah. were doing well with the DSA thousand. I, I think you've you. done well with that objective. Uh, it's, it's it's not always that easy, but no. I think the, I think the no. XIV, the nature of the XIV made it <clears throat> somewhat easier. But still, we were talking earlier about how do you rationalize the the ROI of integration with something like DB two, you know, or mainframe, with you know having to grow. And you've done a, I think a really good job with the XIV. And, you know, and, and, and it's sort of morphed as we've gone into it. We were thinking at one time about having the XIV have some mainframe capability and if you again you go look at the amount of dollars and and investment that we would have to make to do that i mean we could it runs today but you we, the ecosystem that surrounds that and all the feature functions from the host side um, and from our client side would just take us years to be able to put that onto the xiv when again you're chasing a declining market in the mainframe storage space where you're already the dominant player didn't make a lot of sense so you know made more sense for us to go invest in synergy with Microsoft, with VMware, with Oracle, which is sort of you know unusual for IBM to uh, to go off. And so do what's that. next? What's the next disruption? Flash, obviously, a lot of noise yeah, there. We, what, what do we look for? Yeah, we, we saw we we heard discussions regarding uh, 200 terabyte uh, flash uh, arrays, uh, things like that. So, uh, well, certainly there there is. We have introduced here just in the first quarter a extension of of cache with inside the XIB. We call it flash cache. And that's come to market with our Gen 3. We had uh, we just were talking to the guys from Fidelity before, and they're 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 testing that, and getting ready to to break that into their environment, uh, in a in a production way, in a in a very big production way, and and we will you know that that's not like what you typically see within a storage arrays use of solid state drives. It's typically a tier. It'll be a tier zero if you want to call it that. Um, to go along with your classic 15K fiber channel SAS drives and then the nearline drives. Um, so so we, we implemented in a different way. Keeping with the simplicity and the architecture of XIV, we use it more like the way a server would use um, an extension of their cache with, with solid state um, drug um, devices um, and improving overall performance. So that's clearly a, a space that we're, we're, we're going to go target. Right now it's target on, on the read side. Primarily, we'll go target with the right side. You're going to see the SSDs get even bigger and stronger um, from that standpoint. On the DS8000 side, we're going to continue to develop Easy Tier. We just announced uh, Easy, our fourth generation of Easy Tier, and that's for uh, the capability of Easy Tier 4 is encryption of all of the tiers for data at rest. So from SSD through the through the the, the 15K down into the nearline drives. Um, and we laid out statements and directions for easy tier four and f for fifth and sixth generation. And we talked about um, the, the, the flash in the direct attached storage with inside a server, like a power server, being managed by the easy tier with inside the DS8000 or the SVC. Mm -hmm. So quite powerful from that standpoint. We'll introduce um, uh, very large capacity solid state drive uh, drawers within the DS8000 within the, within the year as well. So, you know, the whole world's chasing that performance, but more importantly, chasing, lowering the total cost of performance, if, if you will, um, and, and clearly flash optimization is a key part for our next big thing as we, as we continue to go forward. Bob, this is a great segment. I wish we had more time. Uh, we, we gotta go. Um, Love to have you back, and I'd love and to be continue back. Continue the discussion. Yeah. Uh, uh, thank you very much for thank coming you. to the Cube. Right. Uh, congratulations with right. the success, and, and good luck with the rest of the event and uh, rest right. of the year. All right, take care. All right, thanks thank for watching, you. everybody. Keep it right there. We'll be right back after this break. Thanks, man.